The first 12 years of my life, I grew up in Beaver, Oklahoma, and went to school there and to church there, and uh, that was the panhandle. And then my parents, my granddad died, and my mother got an inheritance, and they came on a trip to Arkansas and decided to, they loved it down here, so they bought, a, bought 70 acres in Benton County. Well, I graduated from Gentry High School and in 1959, and then I went to work in Rogers, Arkansas, and worked for the Rogers Vinegar Company, which used a lot of apples and things, and uh, worked there as the full charge bookkeeper for 18 years. Then my husband, he also worked as a truck driver there, but uh, or for part of the time he did a lot of things. He was jack of all trades, but uh, then his parents got too old to really farm and they had bought this farm. Uh, so he decided he'd buy it and we'd move to the farm. <laughs> My husband was Don Allen. He graduated from Rogers High School. He, uh, his parents had, had moved up here from El Dorado in uh, 70, or no, in 53, and they bought a place out at Horseshoe Bend, what is Horseshoe Bend Boat Dock now, and uh, they had a big dairy out there. So they, when the lake came in, they had to sell and find another place. So they came out here and bought the Joe Franco place, which is uh, still here, but it's been divided. We bought six, uh, they bought 60 acres, raised turkey and cattle and stuff, and uh, we, we moved out here in 77, bought the farm from his parents. And then uh, we built chicken houses and um, chicken house raised cattle and, and farmed. So it was, it was really a hard time because of the fact that uh, uh, interest was so high and uh, we just hardly had enough to, we had to get by on very little. So I worked, uh, two or three days a week at things, just so the kids could go to school and so we could eat. But uh, one of the hardest things, uh, one of the first things that happened, we almost lost the farm, was in, 70, in 1980, we had a drought year. And uh, Memorial, I mean, it was a cold spring, sort of like this year was, and we, uh, uh, Memorial Day weekend, it turned to 90, in the 90s, and we lost 5,000 chickens in one day. They were five, six pound chickens. They were ready to go to market. Nobody working. We had to dig trenches and bury them. And then we had to, uh, uh, you know, we were carrying out a dollar a head. So we just about lost, lost the farm then. But, and then also the well went dry. We had to water out of the pond. There were 50 days that summer that were over 100 degrees. So. That was really, really a traumatic time. <laughs> I moved to Tawny Town in 1977. Natalie was just a baby. She was born in April that year. And uh, one, of the, one of the memories we have is that for a month, Don would say the last load was coming from Rogers. And he said this, you know, for a month, and it was the last load was coming. But we moved out here and lived in uh, an old house. His parents had a trailer house on the place. And so he built the chicken houses and uh, we, we raised, one year we raised over a million chickens. So it was, it was a hard life, but it was, you know, it's paid off in the long run. <laughs> well, uh, there weren't a lot of choices. Uh, the uh, Tawny Town Mercantile was there and we didn't have any quick trips. A Phoenician Inn was there, and Mary Maestri's were the restaurants. Of course, we, we couldn't afford to eat out, but uh, uh, it was just, uh, I don't know. Uh, there just wasn't, wasn't a lot of shopping to be done, in, but we weren't far from Springdale, so we normally went into Springdale. My children started school in Tawny Town. Greg was, started first grade, and that was in August 14th, I think, uh, in 1977, I was registering him for first grade. He had gone to kindergarten in Rogers, but then in first grade, he was going out here. And the, when I went to register him for that first grade, I heard Elvis Presley had died. So this was a day I'll never forget. <laughs> then, then my daughter was not 
she was just a baby, so she didn't start for another five years, but uh, they both went, Greg went through sixth grade and Natalie went from, till they closed the school in 85, I believe she was going into fourth grade. It was wonderful. We had, uh, the school was wonderful. We had uh, six, six grades and uh, had the best teachers in the world. Miss Mabry, I wouldn't care if my kids had had her all through school, but uh, uh, they didn't. They had her a big part of their grade school lives. But uh, uh, anyway, all the teachers were, were good teachers and we worked with the PTA and stuff. We sold t-shirts at the Great Festival. We did, we just were really busy and all the parents knew everybody, you know, it was just a big community. Uh, which was wonderful. We just hated it when the school closed so uh, that we didn't have that fellowship anymore. There were no nuns at the school when, when I started in 77 or when my kids started in 77. Uh, they said that they had been pu Springdale Public Schools for years and uh, that it was just as long as, the, as long as the parents supported the school, it would stay open. But that ended <laughs> because of the fact that uh, when they got classrooms open in Springdale, they moved them to Springdale. But the teachers were, I mean, the Springdale school system, which we'd always been a part of, were uh, really glad to get these kids because they had such a good understanding of things. They were good students and the teachers uh, really uh, reveled in, in getting the kids from Tawny Town. <laughs> Well, it, w it wasn't, wasn't bad uh, because of the fact that, you know, we were busy and gregarious. I mean, we would meet our neighbors and we would do this and that. Joe and Johnny Green lived next door to us and uh, they were, were nice neighbors. And then all the Green boys and we had Greg's one, his best friends were the Green boys. And, and Natalie had neighbors across the street and Joyce Penzo down the road cut my hair. Uh, and Don felt like he, he raised chickens and sold chicken litter and stuff. And he felt like that when Guy Barriola and Edward Pinalto bought litter from him, that he had been accepted. <laughs> uh, and they just uh, kept, uh, I don't know, you just keep, and through the school, you know, you made lots of friends. And uh, it was a good thing. We were involved in 4-H and, and then had our church to go to. We went to a Baptist church. Uh, in Mason Valley in Benton County for several years. That's where I took my kids. Oh, they played baseball and they had soccer. They had a soccer organization. Elda Stockton down uh, in Tawny Town started the soccer out here. I think it was before it ever started in Springdale. And we had soccer for a couple of years and then they decided to move it into town because it got so big. Uh, but Springdale was too far to go for us. So when it uh, left Tawny Town, we didn't didn't continue, but uh, uh, anyway, they did have, they had Little League, or T-ball was my favorite sport, and both of them got to play T-ball right up by the Knights of Columbus Hall, and then uh, we just, uh, they had had lots of friends, and they'd come and play baseball, and they'd go camping, and they'd go do this and that, and walked over the whole area. They'd swim down in uh, the creek down at Elm Springs, and just things that you can't do anymore, but we didn't, you know, we weren't worried about them because it wasn't a dangerous time in in their lives. I don't know that we had any time to, uh, we had the farm, so we were tied down with 100,000 chickens and, and uh, cattle and stuff, but we did go uh, weekends, we would go float on float trips or something, you know, or between chicken batches. And if we if we had a vacation, we didn't really have vacations, but, he was a pilot, and so if we had a few days off between batch of chickens, we would fly someplace, and and uh, we went to the beach. We went to Biloxi one year, and we went to Western Kansas. We flew several places just just on a spur of the moment trip, uh, and had a good time. But our float trips were really good. We still have the I still have the canoe that uh, uh, we bought before we left Rogers, which was in the 70s and uh, it's still in good shape and um, but we and then I was in sorority for 50 years I've been in sorority for 50 years and we had our sorority friends and friends from Rogers they'd come out here and have trap shoots and and uh, we just just kept busy well Don had played when he was in high school 
but then he'd quit for years. He didn't quit. He didn't start back until probably until he sold the farm, which was 2000. Uh, we sold off a lot of our property and uh, uh, he started playing with, uh, and his first singing partner was Chris Bunce from Gentry. They, they were chicken, uh, they had both raised chickens and got acquainted through the chicken organization. And uh, then they started playing and, and it just revolutionized into where he was playing three or four days a week or nights. And, and it was his main passion. He could play for midnight, wouldn't stop him. I mean, you know, it was, and then we went to Mountain View for uh, music festivals and things. And, and uh, uh, but we, then we have it, you know, I mean, when we built this shop house, uh, we started, he built it so it was good for, inducive for company and stuff. And we play. we had jams out here and uh, just, um, still do. I still have, still have a uh, jam once a month out here just because he would have wanted us to. <laughs> we lived in Rogers in our first, when, when we first got married, we lived in Rogers from 66 until 77. And then we bought the farm and moved out here to 1523 Artemine. Of course, it's had a dozen addresses since then, but, uh, and we, raised chickens and cattle and and just did what, what farmers do. And uh, then we decided that uh, uh, we needed needed different facilities and, and the uh, water, I think it was the water uh, line was coming through. So they used our property for uh, head, headquarters, I guess, for their, for their uh, uh, pipe and, and their supplies. And so they decided, I mean, it, Don made a deal with him and he said, well, we won't charge you anything. And, and uh, so they said, well, you can have all the dirt, all this and that. So they gave us all the, the uh, fill for our house and did a lot of the, I mean, you know, let us use equipment and stuff. And, and uh, so that saved us a lot on building this shop house. But uh, this is something Don had dreamed about. And so he had a metal building, 60 by 80, uh, put up and then he finished it out himself, but uh, the concrete was the most expensive part of it But of course we saved a lot by by not having to do the fill and stuff, but anyway, he designed it and uh, uh, Did a beautiful job. It's it's something that's comfortable for any size group. We had a hundred and eight here for uh, our anniversary party and we uh, we have parties uh, more than one, I mean, you know, we've had, had lots of entertainment. <laughs> the trusses, metal trusses, aren't very pretty. So he decided that to cover them up, he would put, uh, it was sort of like a jigsaw puzzle. He built covers over it for the two, four, six, eight, for about 13 covers, uh, or the trusses. And, and they just really set the, set the room off. And then he did all the painting and uh, um, just, I don't know, it, uh, uh, he, we have cork on our floors and we have, uh, I don't know, there's just a lot of different things. The kitchen is, is big, but you're, you're in open space. So you have, uh, access to the whole thing. You're not shut off when you're having, when something else is going on in the house, you're just part of it. And that's a, a good thing because it's just got wide open spaces. <laughs> Tony Town Harmon 4-H Club. I had been in 4-H, um, uh, in my younger years, I was uh, I was a state poultry judge, and uh, we won trips to Chicago and and places. So I was in 4-H for several years in Benton County, and then after we moved out here, I decided that uh, I would like for my kids to be involved. So we started a chapter, and it was uh, Tony Town Harmon 4-H Club. So we met first in the Harmon Methodist Church, and then we met at Tony Town Fire Station. And then we met at Elm Springs Schoolhouse uh, for the probably 15 years that I was involved with it. I got my kids through it. They went, they did trips to DC and to uh, 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 different places, but they had just lots of, and camp, uh, 4-H camp down in Ferndale, Arkansas was a beautiful place. We got acquainted with people all over the state and all over the county and uh, just, 
had, a, had good times in 4-H. And uh, then we also, then when the schools closed at, at Tawny Town, the 4-H club had some money, or we didn't have a lot of money, but we, we went and uh, got volunteers or, or uh, people donated the lumber companies and things donated our supplies and uh, uh, our, our, the dads in the club built the pavilion. It's the one right on 412, right at the road. And it's held up very well because this was like in 85 that we built it. And there's still many, many people use it. So we were proud of that. <laughs> the Tony Town Park has always been a nice park. It had, you know, the equipment, playground equipment stuff and the picnic tables, but it really, uh, the pavilion was just something they needed. They had the picnic tables, but they had no covered pavilions. So since that time, we built the, the rails around, uh, around the pavilion and stuff, and it was very well utilized by the community. Since then, they've built two more, I think, and then they have the bocce court and stuff that they've built since then. So it was just a nice asset to the park. <laughs> well, I'm sure we probably went in 77. <laughs> Uh, the year that uh, uh, we moved out here, and then when uh, the PTA and stuff had, uh, we had uh, sold T-shirts. The Tiny Town Grape Stompers T-shirt was designed by Miss Mabry, who was one of the teachers up there, and she uh, uh, she just really uh, was such an artistic person that uh, I wouldn't have cared, you know, if my kids had had her forever. But uh, the Tiny we we worked. Went every night to the Great Festival, and of course it's grown too. One year at the Great Festival, we had a Labo lady here. She was a chaperone, and she was a dancer in Japan. So she entertained up at the Great Festival. And then another year, we had uh, our Japanese boy who was just 12 years old, and he uh, he just was fascinated by this area. So, and they come for one month in August because they don't have school. That's the month they don't have school. This boy was 12 years old and his parents owned a taxi cab company in Hiroshima. So they were pretty wealthy. They had a whole house and this and that. But he came and uh, he went down to the chicken house and looked in and he said, my husband said, he's, it didn't sound very nice what he said, but he was, he was flabbergasted by the, uh, by the, all the chickens in the chicken house. And he'd come and look in the freezer and he just couldn't believe how much food was in there. He gained 10 pounds in the month he was here because of the fact he liked it. <laughs> but uh, he, the kids in the neighborhood, we, it seemed like I had 100 kids uh, for drinks and stuff uh, all that month because they'd come and they'd play baseball and they'd do this and that. They'd go swim. And he had never been able to swim just in a regular pool. But uh, he didn't know how to ride a three-wheeler, even though they're made in Japan. And... Uh, so he learned lots from him, or from the kids and, and from all of us, but we learned a lot from him too. And then later on, uh, three or four years later, we had a chaperone that stayed with us for a month. And she was just fascinated by everything. She was even interested in the cow patties in the pasture and this and that, but she had shopped, her, her daughter was in California with the Slambo program. And she had shopped for her son because he couldn't come. So she'd bought him a bicycle and she'd bought him this and that. And then she went to Kmart and she could bought him cheaper here. She said next time she was bringing empty suitcases and taking them back to Japan. But we took them to places like War Eagle and, and just uh, all the sites around. You see things different through, through a foreigner's eyes or for, through a stranger's eyes and stuff. And so we, we learned a lot from the time that she and Shinji both were here. But... Uh, Jetty Franco had hosted a swim party for while Shinji's friend uh, while Shinji was here. What's happening now in this area is that houses are being built every place. It's just changed so much. It's not the little country town it used to be. We're going to be surrounded by houses, like our farm right here. We had 60 acres when we started, and we raised chickens and cattle until 2000. Uh, Real estate got to be more valuable, and we could make a lot more money selling real estate than we could farming. So uh, we retired in 2000 and uh, sold off most of our land to different ones. So it's just a wonderful place to live. Uh, we're out in the wide open spaces. I mean, I feel like I'm in the country, but I'm not. I'm surrounded by 
everything. Northwest Arkansas has really changed and uh, we're just part of the Northwest Arkansas community, but uh, you still have your privacy and you still have, um, you know, you can, uh, we've got a beautiful park uptown and uh, uh, close to 412. We're two miles from 412 and we have, uh, um, you know, there's just, just lots and lots of uh, things to, to see and do and, and close. We're 15 miles from Salem Springs, 15 miles from Rogers, 10 miles from Bentonville, and 10 miles from Fayetteville, and five from Springdale. So we're in the middle of, of the whole community, and it's handy when you want to go to the hospitals or uh, anything. But, but Tiny Tan has grown so much now, you don't have to go away to eat. I mean, you, there's lots and lots of restaurants and things. So uh, it's just a, a good place to, to be. A Venetian Inn has been here forever and it's a good place to eat. It's just two miles away. Uh, La Palmas is good and Jose's and uh, of course Mary Maestri's is gone, but uh, it was a namesake, you know, it was a historical event. I mean, you know, people, people came from all over the country to eat at Mary Maestri's and Venetian Inn and everybody that went to school down at the university, that was their, their highlights was the the Italian restaurants at Tawny Town. I guess my favorite thing about Tawny Town is this is where I've lived for 41 years and, and uh, I'm happy to be here. Well, it's, it was a good place to grow up a family. We could just do what we wanted on the farm. You know, you were your own boss.